Welcome back. So let's go ahead and turn this cube into an elephant. So let's switch over to face mode and we can just do that by hitting three at the top of our keyboard. And let's grab these faces right here. And we could hit extrude region, uh, but the shortcut for that is E. So just kind of hover over your highlighted square here, here this little face and hit E and just bring that on up. These are gonna be our little eye sockets. That looks pretty good. And now we can kind of flip over to the bottom and grab these other two faces. And I did that just by clicking on the first one, holding shift and clicking on the second one. And then what we're gonna do is hit E again and just kind of extrude that to about the, the kneecap area <laughs> and then extrude again. And there's our little legs. And then we're gonna make a tiny little extrude for the kind of the bottom of the feet because it's really rounded right there. So if we do E and just barely pull it down just a little bit, it'll give us kind of a nice uh, flat bottom there. So notice we've got these nice archways that will 3D print pretty nicely, uh, but just to check, there's this really cool feature that I use called mesh analysis and you have to be in edit mode to turn it on, but just go to where your overlays are and click on that little drop down right beside it. And if you go down almost to the bottom, that's under the shading section, you should see the third one that says mesh analysis. And when you check that, notice what happens. We've kind of got like a real time indicator if our geometry is uh, kind of breaking our 45 degree rule. So let me show you, if we go back to that little drop down, you can change this from different things. So right now it's analyzing the mesh for overhangs for maximum of 45 degrees. So that's kind of like our 45 degree rule. And we can switch that to different things like sharpness. We can do intersecting parts. We can do thickness. So if you're doing something with really thin walls, it, Blender will kind of tell you with a color if it's too thin. And so really most of the time you'll probably just leave it on overhang, but just wanted to show you that you have this kind of built into Blender, which is really cool. So we don't have to worry about the feet because that's gonna be on the printer bed. But notice right here in the middle of the belly, it's it's red. So we don't want any red if we can help it. So let's switch to maybe like edge mode just by hitting two on the uh, keyboard at the top there and just click that center one and hit G and Z. And we're just gonna kind of move that. So notice if we went way up here, you know, all that um, overhang will disappear but we can just push it up maybe until it turns a little blue. And there we go. And just kind of take a look on the other ones right here. And these should be okay, these little red spots here. They should uh, do fine just because of that, that, that little curve here. And we can always go and fix it later. So let's leave that for now. Another thing I like to do is turn this mesh analysis into a quick key. So if you go back to the drop down and hover over mesh analysis and right click it, you can assign a shortcut, and then I'm just gonna press Alt-Shift-M. I'm just gonna make that up. So now, if I'm hovering in edit mode, I can hit Alt-Shift-M and toggle between mesh analysis. And that's just something that I do a lot and wanted to share with you all. So we'll turn it back off. And the next thing I wanna show you is a different type of extrude tool. So look on some of these tools, you'll see like these tiny triangles to the bottom right. That means there's more inside. So if you just click and hold on those, we've got all these different types. We're not gonna go over all of them today, but I do wanna show you this extrude to cursor. This is new to Blender and pretty cool. So go ahead and click on that one. You'll see it appear right here. And now switch over to face selection with three on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and grab this face right here and notice it's not letting me click on it. So we need to switch back to our selection tool, select it. And now we can use our extrude to cursor. And I'm gonna to go to side view with three on the numpad. And we're just gonna make a trunk. And we wanna keep in mind our 45 degree rule. So I'm just gonna click up here and make sure you still have your extrude selected. And we're gonna make kind of like a, an S shape starting from the bottom. So just start really low here. And we're just gonna click, 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 click. Kind of once you got it kind of set up there. And that's an easy way to do a really curvy trunk there. And now we've got our top one selected still. So just hit S on your keyboard and scale that up nice and large. And now let's switch back to our selection and we can just hit E, 
and click. And notice it kind of flattened out our trunk, uh, but there's actually two faces on top of each other. So if you hit G, you can see that there's kind of another one right there. So now we've made kind of like a little, kind of like a curvy part for the trunk. And let's hit E again, and then hit S right after it. And that will scale this trunk in like that. And then if we hit E again, it'll curve it in just a little bit. And let's go to our side view. And I'm gonna turn on X-ray view just so I can see through here. And maybe hit S to scale it down just a little bit. And we're going to make the inside of the trunk with our extrude the cursor. So just go ahead and click on that. Make sure you still have that, that uh, inside face selected and you're on your side right orthographic view. And we're just gonna do the same thing and just kind of click inside here. Bloop. Just kind of follow the center line there. And there we go. You can even scale that last one down. And now if you look inside, we've got this awesome kind of like depth going down into the trunk and that'll be some nice shadows once it's actually 3D printed. And that's just for fun. So let's go back into edit mode. Just tab into edit mode. We can turn off our see-through and let's add a little tail. So we'll do the same thing here. Just go to your selection mode or you can hit W and click on this little part right in the middle of the behind there. And we'll do the same thing as we did before. Just go to the side view and then we'll click on our extrude to cursor tool. And let's do the same similar thing for the tail. So we'll just click right up here, maybe hit S to scale it down really small and then click again and again and just make a cute little tail and maybe scale that up. Click again and scale it down. Really tiny. And that's pretty cool. And I want it to be a little thinner. So let's, and notice I didn't switch back to my, my selection tool. So anytime I click, it's just gonna keep adding, you know, anywhere I click, it's gonna keep <laughs> extruding. So just control Z if you actually did that too. And just hit W on your keyboard and that'll switch you back to your selection tool. So I'm gonna try and see if I can slide these edges in. So just switch to edge mode using two on your keyboard. And I'm gonna turn on the cage view. Notice how some of our lines are kind of disappearing like right here on the tail. So if we go over to um, our subdivision surface, there's a little icon, the last one, it says cage. So just go ahead and click that. And that'll let you see a little bit more in detail kind of saran wraps it, uh, the, the wireframes to your model. And you can just toggle that on and off if you need it. So I'm gonna just grab these right here and just see if I can hit G and X. And just make that tail a little bit skinnier. Maybe even this one here too. So G and X. Yeah, that's cool. Now all we need is the mouth and the tusks. So make sure you have your selection tool with W and click on uh, the face. And notice I'm still in edge mode. So let's switch back over to face mode and click on this little mouth part here. And we're just going to hit E to extrude and just bring that on in right like that. There we go. That's so now he's got a little mouth, <laughs> which is really cute. And let's click on the cheekbone right there. And now we're gonna use something called inset. So the tool is right here. You can click on that and you know kind of push and pull right there. But what I like to do is just stay in selection mode and hit I on the keyboard and just make a little, little inset there. And now we can go to the side view and hit extrude, bring out a little tiny trunk and scale it. So just hit S and scale it down to make it kind of pointy. And then we'll take that face and drag it up with G and Z. And there we go. We've got these cute little, little, uh, little tusks there. And we could even go to the front view and maybe hit G and X, kind of point them out just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more flair, a little more life. <laughs> and that's pretty cute. Uh, but we're missing the ears. So let's go ahead and add the ears. 
go ahead and select the top center square or face right there and the one right below it. So just shift click on those two. And then we're gonna hit E on the keyboard to extrude out just a little bit and then hit E again to extrude out some more. So now we've got these cute little ears, but I think they could be better. So let's click on the four faces that we just extruded, the front facing ones. And then we'll hit I again to inset. So I, just scale it on in just a little bit. And then we'll hit E to kind of push it back into the ear. And you can go as deep as you want. I'm just gonna do it just a little bit. And that was looking pretty great. So let's go ahead and jump into the next video where I'll show you how to add the eyes and do any final tweaking.